Hi everybody, my name is Emma, this is Emma Rosen Books and today is the third video in a series of four on how to write and publish your own children's picture book. This is all inspired by my book Lily the Limpet Gets Lost, it's just sharing my experience of how I went about publishing this book. Um, in today's video I am looking at how to format it, so there's already been videos on how to write it particularly in verse, how to illustrate your book or find an illustrator and today's video is then taking the illustrations and the text that you've, you've got from those processes and putting them together in a document. In this video I am going to use Pages because I use a Mac and I'm also going to use Canva which is a free online site that you um, sign up for and there are paid subscription versions of it but this is not, <laughs> not that. Um, this is using the free version. You can use Photoshop and InDesign to do these things but they are both expensive so if you have Photoshop or you have InDesign fantastic use those they're good programs but I don't have them so I used Pages and Canva if you don't have a Mac and you use uh, Microsoft Word I'm pretty sure that the current version of Microsoft Word works pretty much the same as pages, it tends to work those way, that way these days, so you should be able to do the same things. As far as I know, I'm sorry I don't know because I use a Mac, but I, I believe you'll be able to do the same things with it that I did with um, pages. Also, just to point out that there were two things that I struggled to do with the free software that I had, and a friend helped me out who had Photoshop. Um, those were making images that had transparent backgrounds, I don't know how to do that on any software I have, if anyone knows uh, and can link me to some good software, that would be great, let me know. So a friend of mine did that for me on some of the images, cut them out and made it transparent. And uh, one of the files needed to be saved via Photoshop because of being able to set the settings that it needed. Uh, I do explain that in the video, um, but again, the same friend, my friend Pete, helped me out by me sending him the file and him just resaving it for me. So hands up. I did have to use Photoshop a little bit uh, because there were two things I couldn't do. Um, so you may have a friend who can help you out with those things, there may be workarounds. Uh, I tried to do it with GIMP and I couldn't do it, so I'm, I'm just putting that out there. But the, those things that I needed to do, uh, you don't necessarily need images with transparent backgrounds and uh, you may not be using Ingram Spark, which was the other reason that I needed Photoshop was to do the files with that. So just a bit of a disclaimer, I did use Photoshop twice. Um, I hope that you find this stuff useful, I've been as frank about how I did it and uh, you know any issues and all, all that kind of stuff as it can be um, and uh, obviously let me know in the comments any useful stuff that you can add. Anyway here comes my computer screen. Okay everyone so here's my computer screen we're starting off with pages first so I'm going to choose a blank template let's make that big that's not big enough let's make it bigger right now you can download templates from KDP, I know that, I'm sure you can probably do it from Ingram Spark as well, so have a look um, if you can get a pre-set up template, but actually uh, I had some pre-set up templates and I ended up changing them around, so you can do it either way, but I'm going to show you how to set it up from scratch. Now the first thing that you need to know is how big you want your book to be, so have a look at some books, see what kind of size you like. I like square children's books, I went for an 8.5 inch by 8.5 inch uh, trim size. Have a look as well of whether you get all of the different options for your particular trim size because sometimes you can't get expanded distribution for p particular sizes, things like that. So do make sure you look through all the different options before you decide how big to make your book. Anyway, once you know what you're doing, um, you can set up your document to be the size that you want it. So if you go into page setup, um, you can choose paper size, go for custom size. And uh, this is already set up for the size that Lily the Limpet was. So let's say it's eight and a half by eight and a half inch, which is 216 millimeters square. Now you'll notice that this isn't 216, it's because I've allowed for bleed margins. So you've got 219 on the width, 222 on the height, because for bleed margins, you add three millimeters to the width and six to the height. That's because the on the width, obviously, one side of the width is actually where the book opens so that doesn't need a bleed margin in there in the spine it only needs it on the edge so you've got one three millimeter bleed margin on the side and then a three millimeter on the top and a three millimeter on the bottom so that adds up to six so that's why that's the size it is so press ok ok and then i should have a square page i have brilliant um, now I want these to be facing pages, so I'm going to go into document and choose facing pages, 
and I'm going to add some pages. Now, when you open a book, the first page is always on its own. So that's what it is. That's that first page of a book. Um, and then you get your facing double page spreads like so. Now, I also want this to not be a, a Word document, if that makes sense. Like, I don't want the text to kind of flow from one to the other. I'm setting up pictures here. So I'm going to turn off document body, um, convert to a page layout document. Yes, I do want to. So then that will mean that if I move things around, it's not going to make the text flow from one page to the other. It's really hard to explain what I mean. It also means that I can add and delete pages and... I can move pages around. So for instance, if I just put this bit of text here, if I view page thumbnails and I want that bit with that bit of text to actually be on the second page, I can move it, okay? You can't do that if it's set as document body, okay? So I am going to drop some pictures in right. I'm just showing you as an example, I'm not setting this up properly, but it will give you an idea for how you can do it. Um, so let's say that I want to set some text up. So this is my first page. So um, let's say I'm going to call this Lily the Limpet gets, oh, can't spell all of a sudden, gets lost. Oh dear. <laughs> and let's go to formatting for my text. Um, and I'm going to make that huge. Let's go wee massive. And I'm going to put gets lost on a second line. Um, and I'm going to make that in the middle. I'm going to make it even bigger. Now, something to bear in mind is whether your texts, uh, your fonts rather, that you use are commercially, um, you can use them commercially. So the tech that, oh dear, can't speak, the fonts that I have used for my, um, for Lily the Limpet for the titles, it's called... Kaoshan script. So there you go. You can see that's it. Let's make it bigger. Woo. Now I got that from a very good font site called Font Squirrel. Here it is. Um, so it gives you various different fonts that you can choose from. And if you look here, it tells you what they're available for. So this font is, uh, can use it for commercial desktop use, font face embedding, it can be embedded, you can use it in ebooks, you can use it in applications. So depending on what you want it for, um, so I looked at various different fonts, found some that I liked. Kaushan Script, this is the one I'm using for the headings. And uh, you can see it's enabled for everything. So do make sure that the fonts that you're using, legally you're allowed to use them. So going back to here, so there's my font. I want to put a picture on there. So um, do excuse me jumping about as I'm trying not to show you the entire contents of my computer. Um, so I'm going to choose one of my images. So I'm going to have um, a bucket. Now these have been uh, cut out on Photoshop. Um, a friend of mine helped me out with that. So that they've got an invisible background. So look, I could put that there if I wanted. And whoops, I'm gonna have my jellyfish who I never used in the book. So let's have Mr. Jellyfish. Um, and then because of the what well, the type of layout you've got, you can just put them wherever you want. So my jellyfish can go there, my bucket can go there. Doesn't that look lovely? Brilliant. <laughs> so there's how you can set it up. As I say, I've just given you an idea. You can put them on top of each other. So and look, I've got my bucket and my jellyfish is sitting in front of it. It needs to be a bit smaller. Or he could be in my bucket. <laughs> however you like it anyway so you can move your images around oh look and then they've joined together he can just stay there no I want him. oh no he can sit on it like that right um so then that shows you how you can set up uh, title pages like that you can put your name on it however you like it whatever um and then actually what I haven't shown you that's not central of course on pages what you can also do is you get the lines to tell you there you go, right in the middle. Um, and then I can line up these images as well. Let's put my jellyfish over there to make sure it's in the middle. Do you see that? Oh, there you go. So that that image is in the middle of the text. Now, because obviously it's got the shadow on it, it doesn't quite work like that. So I'll drop it there. But you can line things up in that way to make sure that things actually are central. If you didn't know that, sorry if I'm teaching my grandmother to suck eggs at all. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make a double page, make the double page spread bit. So my images are in photos where I cropped them. So here's an example of one of them. Sorry, that's not in the center. Ooh, there we go, that'll do. Okay, so edit, 
if I was cropping it, because initially they all came from scans, then you go to crop and look, you can see where the edge of the page is. So you crop it in and then when you press done, you should be able to see if there are any of the, um, the lines around the page left around the outside. So um, if I move this aside and drop that in, and I also want the page that goes next to it, which is that one. There we go. Okay, so back to here. So this picture goes on this side. So what I'm going to do is line it up with the corner. So did you see the yellow lines appear there? See? Um, and you need the picture to line up with the inside edge. So I'm then going to pull that out. Now remember that the page is taller than it is wide because... Uh, of the bleed margins. So I'm gonna to have to pull that out so that it's down to the bottom. I can't see. Let's add some more pages so I can see. Whoops. So put that back there. That's better. So now I can see. See that yellow line has appeared along the bottom there. And then I'm gonna get this picture and I'm gonna drop it in. And I'm gonna pull that one out. There we go. Whoops. Okay. And uh, if you've cropped them correctly and all of that stuff, then they should match up perfectly. Um, sometimes you have to spend a bit of time making sure that everything does add up perfectly along the middle. That's if you're doing double page spread that way. Of course, it may be that you've only got a picture on one side. Um, and in which case you might do something like having a small picture here and then some text around it. OK, but however you like. So you've set that up. And then. I'm going to put in some text and decide where you're going to put it. Um, and I haven't actually got the text of the book up, but it's something like um, down on the beach in Little Town Bay. This isn't actually the words that are on this page either. <laughs> Let's say between sea and sand. Can you tell I've, uh, uh, I've, <laughs> I've read this a few times? rocks stand in the way of the first two lines right so um, I want to change the font and I'm going to make it this font and I want to make it at least 16 points I would say and that's a little bit light so I'm going to make it bold OK, and then you decide where to put it again. If you want it in the middle, you can put it in the middle or you can put it wherever you want on the image. Um, equally, you could have your tiny image, like we said before, and your words underneath. If That's how you're formatting like that. And you can line them up uh, in the middle like so. This could be formatted in the middle like that if you wanted to. Another thing that you can do if your image, let me just drag that back out to there. The, um, let's say that this is uh, here, right? And you can't read it very well. Then you could add, I mean, obviously in this particular instance, you just move it somewhere else. But uh, another thing that you can do is to change the background of your text, text background. Give it a white background, um, which if you look at it that way, that's how it looks. What you can do is change the opacity of that to about 50%. Oh, I did not mean to do that. I'll leave that thing. Uh, and then let's change the text opacity. I'm sorry, that should be up to 100%. Come on, where's the background? There we go, background, and turn that op opacity down to 50%. There we go. And it will just give it a bit of a fade out. Yes, you can see the edges on it sometimes. Um, but yeah, so you can do that, move things around. Sorry to just cut in here. Sorry if anything looks different. Um, I just thought of something I wanted to add after I'd made this video. So um, with this document, just wanted to um, highlight, I did mention this in one of my other videos, but I thought it was important to mention it on here too. For some binding options, you need to have 
uh, your pages in multiples of four and I would set your book up with that in mind. So um, make sure that your number of pages is going to be divisible by four. Um, Lily of the Limpet is 28 pages long. It means that the publisher won't suddenly add a load of blank pages on the back because it's easier for them to print it in fours. I don't know why, it just is. It's just a kind of standard way of printing. So you might find if your book was 26 pages long that they've added two pages on the end. Um, I made mine divisible by four, it came out perfect. So I I've just wanted to highlight that. The other thing I needed to mention, which I forgot to, your last page needs to remain blank. That's a requirement with KDP and with Ingram Spark. That's because they print a little barcode on the end. If you don't do that, so you might have finished your book off and you've got something really beautiful here. Let's just move a page there, right? So you've got this beautiful last page with this lighthouse on, right? And that's, you want the last page of your book as the person closes it to be this beautiful image. And then because you didn't leave a blank page, KDP or Ingram Spark or whoever you use have added two pages on. So they've gone boom, boom. And so your last page will actually be half a page with a blank page next to it, and then this one for the barcode. Um, so bear that in mind. Make sure that whatever you set up, the last page is a blank page. Make sure it's divisible by four, and then you won't have any problems when it comes to be printed, and it will be exactly how you see it on the screen. So the other thing that you can use is Canva. Um, you can do a lot with Canva. I did my cover in Canva, so I'm going to show you how I did that. So you're going to say create a design. Uh, custom dimensions. Um, now I'm going to show you, you can set up pages, interior pages in a very similar way to how I did on pages just then, if you want to. Um, I quite like putting the words and the pictures together in pages and then moving it over to Canva. But you can create things in Canva pretty well. It's the fonts that are a little bit difficult, so you'd have to import those over. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make the cover. So I'm going to choose millimetres. Now, if I have got, uh, my book is saddle stitched, which means it's got um, staples in the middle. So uh, that means that I don't need to allow for a spine measurement. What I would do if you are, uh, if you're having a spine on your book, um, have a look on whatever site you're using, so Ingram or KDP or whoever, and see what allowances you need to make and you can get templates to set it up. So actually I'll show you how to do that too. Um, so I am adding my uh, my width is my, my 219 plus 219. So what's that? Four, oh dear, brain dead, 438. Have I done that right? I'm sorry if I haven't. And my height was 222. Create design. Okay, so you can see how I could have set that up as just a square to just get one page, right? But this is the wraparound of the cover. Now, for instance, I'm using Ingram Spark. So I've set up a template. Uh, they send it to you. I've got it saved in photos. Here it is. And I'm going to drop it on there and line it up and make sure it's the right size. So if you use these templates, they show you exactly where the fold goes. The ISBN on Ingram, you're allowed to move around. It's different with KDP. It depends who you use, okay? So you can get templates from them and you can see all of the uh, requirements. So then you can, now the cover, I set up in pages the same way as I did the uh, inside, okay? So I've set up, whoa. So I've set up that square. So I'm going to move that across. And I'm going to put that. There you go, so it's against the spine. All right, so I've already set it up with all the fonts and the names and everything and dropped my images in, um, in, in Word. And then the back page should be in there somewhere because I've done this before. There's various different versions of the back page. Let's use this one. Okay, so that. Drag that out, okay, so I've got, whoops. I've got a front and a back, okay, fabulous. Now, if you're using KDP and they add their own uh, barcode, then you're pretty much done. Is that actually for the bottom? No, it isn't. Oops. There we go. Okay, uh, if you want to add the barcode from Ingram, um, then what you can 
do is get this bit, send it to the front, and again, and then you can crop it to get your barcode. Do, 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 which will be the perfect size because it's important that you don't resize it. I probably haven't done that exactly perfectly. Okay, there's my barcode and I'm going to whack it there. Okay, so you can move your barcode around, put it wherever you want it. It could be, I've moved that side, haven't I? There we go. It could be over the seagull's face if you wanted it. <laughs> put it wherever you want. If you want to do something like put the name, whoa, I keep doing that. Do that. The name of your company in then you can and so on yeah and you can build it all up again make sure that you use fonts that are commercially available you can build things up you could start from scratch of course and you could um like I said you can you can put your picture in and then layer your text up using canva but I like using the fonts in pages because then I can uh upload those fonts into onto my computer and use those fonts on Word. It's, I don't know that you can do that on Canva, I don't know. So yeah, that's why I've done it that way. I've made it in Word, I've and then I've um, exported that as a PDF and then dropped it into here so that I can set that up that way, okay? Um, but there's lots of different ways of doing it and hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can build it up and then you can export it by downloading as a very, very high quality PDF. Now, where the one that you download from Canva works really nicely for Ingram Spark, it also works for KDP. With uh, pages, if I export this to PDF, works perfectly for KDP, Ingram Spark doesn't like it. Now, I suppose what you could do is you could copy all of this into Canva if you wanted and then export it that way. It would probably be a pain, but you could do it. Um, alternatively, if you look up on the guide on, um, on Ingram Spark, it tells you how to save it using Photoshop. So if you have a very kind friend that you can send your file to and say, can you just resave this for me? Because it needs to be saved um, with a CMYK uh, setting. So if you have somebody who can just save it for you, then that's great. Otherwise, if you're using Ingram Spark, you're going to have problems with the PDFs from pages because they don't have the right settings and you don't have the options to change them. Personally, I tried to change it with GIMP and I couldn't do it. So, um, yeah, as I say, if you're using KDP, not a problem. If you're using Ingram, it, it is and you need to think of a way around it to make it CMYK. OK, so I hope that all of that is really useful. As I say, you can set your pictures up however you want. Keep adding your pages so that your book is as long as you want it. Remember to add your start and your finish material and all of that. And you can navigate around as you wish and set it all up. I hope that helped. Good luck with your project. And the next video will be all about how to set this up on Ingram uh, or on KDP. So I look forward to seeing you all for that one. Take care.